All right, what is going on, everyone? And welcome back to another updated Black Desert video. So it's that time again. Thanksgiving sales are happening. The holidays are here. Christmas is right around the corner. And so a lot of people are checking out this game again and or returning and or new players. So I wanted to update one of my older videos talking about the Pearl Shop. Now, as a person who's been playing this game, I guess since the beta, I wanted to talk about what things are essential, what things you can, you know, get in game without spending real money. And I'll be super honest with all of you guys. And I'll tell you, like, is this pay to win? I'll be straight up with all of you about it. So a lot has changed over the past, like six months or so when I made this last video. And I'm going to be talking about like how you can go about getting all of this stuff for yourself as well, whether you're a new player or returning and all that stuff. So. <clears throat> first thing we should look at is i guess we'll just go down the list and we'll talk about i think all the things that are important for the most part and yeah so if you are new or returning you're probably going to see a lot of these these are actually pretty decent value <clears throat> for the most part and so if you're a new player just get these things first but we're going to be talking about loyalties second this is the loyalty shop where you don't spend real money on it you basically get like 200 loyalty every day just for logging in and then these sort of help you out so what do i think are the important things you should get basically anything near the bottom which is like the important things are uh, always wait for your characters uh family inventory and then like family wait anything that's basically permanent for your account not just a specific character upgrade is always good and then later on like um all the workers stables and lodging and all that stuff that's something you get later on when you think you need it but as a high priority i would probably always go weight limit and then family inventory and all that stuff that's just super helpful and just things that are permanent account wide versus um, something you might need just later down along the line. And then, so yeah, that's about it. Um, there's one thing that I've always wanted to talk about. And a lot of people ask me this before. So inventory versus weight. And it's wild how you actually have to buy both of them. But if you can only pick one, I would always choose weight limit over inventory slots simply because if you look at this, I have 192 slots and this is unironically how I usually keep my inventory on a regular. I didn't just clean out my inventory just for the video. So when you grind, you're probably going to get like maybe 10 more something. But I think by default, you get like a few more rows or something and just doing all the questing. So. I would always take weight simply because you have to carry more stuff and then a lot of the stuff in the game or the things you do are grinding and that builds up through weight and i'll explain how to do like weight stacking on your horse and then everything else like maids and everything we'll talk about that in a second but overall i think weight is always more important than inventory and you honestly get a lot of inventory stuff just by playing the game like just playing through seasons on all your characters so all these extra inventory slots i have not paid for any of them these are just given over time from events login uh playing through seasons and so yeah you could probably max out another inventory or two with all of these and i just kind of have them just by playing the game i didn't buy them at all but wait on the other hand they don't give those away for free so we go down to function tab and look at like all this weight versus inventory. Um, yeah, inventory, you could probably skip it and just do all the questing and get all the bonuses yourself. Weight, on the other hand, I do think is actually important. And especially if you are uh, only playing one character and not like a bunch of them, it is what it is. But yeah, so for all of the weight things, you can buy two per character realistically if you're gonna buy all of them you don't have to buy them both yeah obviously more is better but um as an actual end game player i 
like getting away with like 2000 3000 weight more than enough and we'll talk about how to uh do some free to play tricks with that as well so yeah if you're gonna ask me weight versus inventory wait every day and make sure to get all the loyalty shop ones first so the next thing we're going to talk about is of course the subs for this game the subscriptions um <clears throat> so as a person who plays a lot of mmos we all know the standard subscription is like 15 dollars a month i think we've all just kind of accepted that at this point so yeah one thing i wanted to mostly talk about is which one of the three is worth it so they have the value pack and they have the <clears throat> blessing of comma Silve and the secret book of old moon if you are only going to buy one of them the value pack con is considered the 30 day 15 dollar subscription all of them are optional but i think this one will give you the overall most value in terms of what you do no matter if you are a life skiller grinder or just like you do whatever you want this will probably give you the most value in terms of like all of this stuff you can buy especially the weight limit that we talked about inventory um it kind of just gives it to you as long as your sub is going on and um yeah so i think the value pack is the most important one as for the uh blessing and the secret book of old moon what do they do <clears throat> the blessing gives you energy item drop weight central market uh weight and like transaction for your maids and all that stuff and storage uh weight limit i actually don't think this one is as worth it as the secret book of old moon for the most part yeah item drop rate is nice but they kind of give a lot of stuff away these days for in-game events that just give item drop rate to the point where you can for the most part cap out at 300 percent or get very close to it without even having this active um this is more just for like the extra you know like it weight on top of what you already have and energy recovery is nice admittedly especially for the life skillers out there but there's also a lot of items that could go around it so i think of the three value pack being at number one and blessing of comma silve at number three like it's nice to have but do you need it no the secret book of old moon obviously this is in the middle this one gives xp for combat life skill skill xp and the most important thing of the secret book of old moon is being able to buy uh buffs at from your tent if you have one and i actually have a video on how to get the tent for free and not spend like 50 dollars or whatever it costs these days so i'll leave a link in the description to the video if you want to learn how to get it for free uh it's just an in-game quest that takes what maybe 10 minutes tops or something 15 minutes if it's your first time doing it and have no idea what's happening but yeah the ability to have uh change skill presets on a one minute cooldown uh, that used to be 10 by the way so changing skill presets and buying buffs from your tent is so important especially if you play this game on a regularly um so yeah the xp itself is nice you don't really need it though but these are like weighted higher than um what else it is so let me show you how it actually works if you're thinking about getting the uh tent for example so let's say you have the tent or you have the free one it still should function very similarly and i'll show you how it works so back in the day before the tent even came out the way people got villa buffs is you see these icons over here these like villas all over uh valencia and everything so you would have to park a character over here and then you trade an npc like 10 mil for like a seven day pass or something back when 10 mil was like an actual hour's worth of grinding so people were skeptical about that but that's old news um so basically you'd have to buy a scroll from there every time <clears throat> and now all you have to do is if you have the tent you have that and then basically these give the equivalent buffs from your tent wherever you are and so yeah these are all the villa buffs essentially and you just buy them 
and a cost based on time. So I think that is actually a huge one, especially if you are a grinder. Well, actually, if you do any sort of combat in this game, it is super helpful. And you could also buy church buffs from there as well. So yeah, of the three um, subscriptions, in all honesty, the value pack is the basically monthly subscription that we all know in MMOs. And then these two temporary buffs are, you know, optional, but... I do value the secret book of old moon way higher than the blessing. If I were to get rid of one, it would be this one for sure. But sometimes they have sales where you just get them and then you don't think about it. All right. So that's my honest opinion on all the subs. Yes, it is kind of expensive. I wish they would just bundle all in one and make it a little bit cheaper. And then I think people would actually do that instead of buying all of them individually. But it is what it is. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is maids and butlers. So essentially, this is like having extra weight without the extra weight. So what do maids and butlers do? They allow you to place items into your inventory or deposit and withdraw into your storages without, you know, actually being at the storage. So like if you're grinding, for example, and then your weight is full from, you know, all the trash loot, just deposit it into any town and then pick it up later and i honestly don't think i would recommend people getting maids and butlers these days because one i kind of see them going out pretty regularly so if you play your through your seasons um you just kind of get them they give it away for free and then also during like holiday events and everything so realistically these are nice to have, but do you really need them? And if you were to buy them, which one would I pick? Storage over Central Market. Uh, Central Market allows you to put things in your warehouse. And uh, storage obviously lets you put them into storage. So, yeah, overall, um, you could probably get a lot of these for free just by playing the game naturally. And are they nice to have? Yep. Do you need them? Nope. All right, so let me teach you how to horse stack on like your horse. Let's say you're grinding. And this is one thing that people do who like play alt characters or just don't have all the weight in inventory. So this has been a thing for like, I guess over, uh, I don't know, however long this game has been out, as long as you can grind. Let me just show you how people do it. Free to play method. Okay, so assume Okay, assume this is your horse, and this is how it works. Um, okay, so you have 200 weight limit on your horse, right? Let me show you how it's done. This is how you stack trash loot when you're grinding. I'm just showing you an example. All right, so first of all, what do you do? Let's pretend these birch planks are our trash loot. And what you want to do is like stack a hundred of them. This is in your inventory. Pretend this is trash loot. And then you put it onto your horse, right? Now your horse is 500 weight, which is carrying all your trash loot. And then let's say you're still grinding. And so you get like another thousand trash loot, right? But you, you try stacking it and it doesn't work, right? So it's like, oh, too heavy. So here's what you do. You can only do it with the same item, like same item type. But you take the trash loot from your horse and it goes into your inventory. Now you have 2,000, right? And then now you stack it again on your horse and it's doubled. So when you're grinding, this is how people do it. You stack trash loot on your horse and you don't actually need like all the weight. Um, it's been a thing in the game since the game came out and apparently all the developers know it. They've just never fixed it. So it is what it is. So yeah, anyway, that's how you stack trash loot and... Uh, all the stuff on your horse. And I don't... If there's a limit, the limit is probably high to the point where most people don't grind as much on here. Um, so yeah, this is one of those things where you could just uh, dump all this onto you, your storage and everything. So cool, right? See how that works? Don't actually need all this weight. It's just nice to have. All right, so... Yeah, maids and all that stuff, you can get them by buying them or do the events. 
they are nice to have. I just haven't bought any in years. I just collect them whenever they give it out for free. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the whole tent, the camping tool. So I have a video dedicated to how to get one for free. And the free version is essentially like uh, a seven day temporary one. And then you have to remake all the parts or something. Uh, where is it? I think there's something you can buy on the market. I don't actually remember where it is because I have the permanent one, so I haven't had to think about it. But if I were to guess, it's probably... Uh, where would it be? It's not under furniture, but it is... Is it? Yeah, these thing, old moon camping pieces. And I think you could just craft them through towns and stuff, but when you do it, you get a quest and then... It, teaches you how to do it so what it looks like is essentially this thingy once you install your camp it gives you the same four parts that you had before probably should have just stood by the camp before but let me just show you what the differences are actually aside from one being like real money and one being a temporary thing that you have to deal with every week so you see these items when you buy the paid camp you get these items and then you there's like an empty slot over here you just pay for them and you goes in there um and then essentially you could buy everything as well like these are church buffs loot buffs item drop rate and everything else you could repair your stuff and there's a storage i i've never used the storage actually in my tent ever but the only thing i use is the villa scrolls and Buying item drop rate and sometimes church buffs if I forget. So the difference is one is temporary. They have to re refresh and remake every week and one is permanent. So I do think this one is actually worth it. However, one thing I will say is I would not buy this at full price. The full price is like $50 or something. It goes on sale so frequently to the point where if you can get like a 50% discount on it, I think that's more of a value because it is a useful item admittedly do i think it's 50 dollars value and uh, no so try to get it on sale it's probably on sale right now <clears throat> let's actually look at that um where would it even be a uh, sale is it on sale holy there's a lot of where would it be actually travel aid and Wait, buildables, the tent. Yeah, it's on sale right now for 25% off plus all the extra coupons they have. So if you're thinking about getting it, now is probably a time, but it's on sale. So yeah, it is worth it, the campsite. Um, whether you get the permanent one or the temporary one, still good. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is fairies and pets. Oh boy. So admittedly, I do actually think Fairies are probably the most pay to win thing in this game and pets not so much anymore because they kind of just hand them out to the point where uh, Yes, pets could be expensive like there is RNG, but there is also a hundred percent guarantee To the point where you could just you know skip the whole RNG process of it um, So the part where pets get really expensive is if you're trying to min max every skill and get like the extra few stat bonuses of whatever i think the things you should look for for pets is the last um skill over here which is like for example item drop rate that only appears on like arctic foxes and various other pets i'll teach you how to look for the stat you want and like the garmoth one was 100 hp and all the stuff so the important thing you guys want to look for in a pet is the last skill over here. Uh, so like, for example, the specialty is the item drop rate. So yeah, pets and fairies. And then fairies, how they get expensive is because there are very important skills to get. And yeah, I did spend <laughs> more than I would have liked to on the fairy. But you guys can watch that video as well. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So pets. Are they important? Absolutely. If you do grinding, they pick up loot for you so you don't have to manually press the button. And 
the ones that I would go for are the ones that you ultimately like. So if your goal is to just get tier four pets so you can grind and you don't have to think about it, uh, just buy them off the market. Like I think you can actually buy them off the central market. Depends on the time of year when they give out like pets during events, you can actually just get some. So if you don't care like what the stats are, you don't even have to spend real money. Plus they kind of give it to you for free just by playing the game as well. But if you are looking to min max your pets, like let's say you only do grinding and you want combat XP, that's where the money and stuff kind of sinks in. But for the most part, um, just get the pets you like. They do a, li a little bit of a different thing. Uh, so for example, the Arctic Fox that we talked about, here's how we go about looking at this. You look at the talent for every pet and then find the one that works for you. So for example, the Arctic Fox is an important one because it gives item drop rate increase and it only works with other like upgrading to the same type of pets. And then everything else is kind of irrelevant. So like birds will pick up loot further, but they're slower. Whereas the Fox one has a higher drop rate. As the game progresses, pets are more of a min max thing like at after you get them to tier four it's just min max versus everything else uh so what i would recommend is for people to get five pets at minimum it doesn't matter what tier it is over time you will upgrade those pets and get like tier fours and fives so how do you upgrade them how do you skip through the rng list okay so let me just take a pet for example and uh like let's let me see exchange so how does this work you see how every pet over here has a different like tag under it so like let's say rare premium rare something so let's see let's say we want to upgrade this tier three dog you can only use other premiums and then when you hit the exchange this is the one you want to upgrade and this here's where the rng comes in if you do that one, it'll tell you if you try to smash the pets now, this is the chance of upgrading. The more you uh, play around with it, and then ideally you could get this tier 4 to 100%. And that's what I would recommend for all of you to do if you're going for it. Simply because it is straight up, like, if you can skip the whole RNG process, it's 100% worth it. So, like, yeah, that is something you just have to play around with if you mess around with that one always go the 100% route especially when it comes to like real money and all that stuff so just keep that in mind so we talked about how to look for the important tiers or like the types of pets we talked about how to in, like enhance them essentially and now we're going to be talking about fairies <sighs> okay so fairies are probably the most expensive thing in this game admittedly because you do kind of want various skills in this game so there are ways to get it for free like getting the fairy itself is not the hard part getting the right skills on the fairy is the hard part so there's a quest line in the game it's probably somewhere in your suggested if you've never done it before so what you do is you get these lila petals you get them from grinding life skilling just playing the game they just come naturally and you bring them to the Kamasilv Temple, <clears throat> which is right here, to the uh, right of Heidel a little bit. And then you can exchange them for the like fairy wings, and then they can go from tier 1 to tier 4. So what do you do? How do you upgrade them? Uh, you feed your fairy like green gear or like honey wine, and they basically level up, right? So you can get your fairy to max level without spending any money. So like, let me see. I think I have some of the items. Yeah, these sweet honey wines. You could use that. Don't buy those dark honey wines with money. That's kind of sketch, actually. But yeah, <clears throat> the part where this thing gets really uh, pay to win is like getting the right skills and everything. So I have a more dedicated video talking about how to go about getting all the right skills, which skills are important. So if you want to see a more detailed video, um, you can watch that one as well. But I think realistically, 
the things you want are con miraculous cheer because this allows you to basically set your potions including infinite potions and they'll they will use it on whatever if your health goes down below a certain percentage and um yeah so i mean this is probably the most important thing feathery steps is weight increase from 100 to 125 so if it goes past 100 you can go to 125 you see what it, how that's uh pretty important you know what i mean continuous care i realistically don't think people need continuous care five don't need time people will need it is if you are a very high-end pvp -er. um so i talked about in my other video which one should you go for so like for example each tier of like continuous care you can hold five eight or twelve items so here's let me just show you how it works you get three tabs right you could select all the items so if you are a pve -er and you're using all these elixirs you probably use more slots Nowadays, it's less relevant simply because Harmony drafts exist, and that's basically like 16 slots in one. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> it, it does take up 15 slots in here. So keep that in mind. You don't actually need like food connected and all that stuff, but it's whatever. Um, so what I would ask yourself when you're going for your continuous care is how many slots do you actually use? And even then, you could literally just put this on your hotbar and every 15 minutes you just click it again you don't even need it anymore so that's one thing but uh, i got mine back in the day before harmonies were even a thing and then i was i didn't want to press every single button so that's why the fairy was nice nowadays less relevant so yeah aside from that uh the only thing you really need is miraculous cheer Feathery Steps is nice to have. Continuous Care is kind of important, but um, you don't need 20 unless you're actually doing something with 20. And so, yeah. The last thing we want to talk about is obviously costumes in this game. We all know costumes are kind of pay to win. You, people just swipe thousands of dollars and then melt the costumes for Cron Stones to enhance. Yes, that is pay to win. Do most people do it? No, I can guarantee you, as a person who's been playing this game since the start, there are like less than 1% of players that just max out their, uh, you know, like selling their costumes on the market. So they have this thing called um, like the warehouse capacity and then the pearl item selling limit. So basically, if you were going to just swipe your credit card, here's how it works. You can sell up to 35 uh, pearl items a, a week and most people sell the most expensive things obviously and i guarantee you most people do not even max that out and uh the way you do it is basically if you are on the buyer side of it you go to the pearl shop you put an order on a costume and if someone gets it you are you're not spending the money someone else is so or you just buy vendor crons. Most of the time, 99% of the times, I just buy vendor crons these days because I don't have time to wait for it. So, here's my stance on costumes and all that stuff. If you are buying a costume because you think you like it, you know, every video game has it, cosmetics, and uh, non, like, you know, uh, like, pay-to-win stuff. If you're buying an outfit because you think it looks cool, cool, very awesome. I don't care what you do with it. If you're thinking about pay to win and just like selling them, I can assure you that your experience in the game won't be affected because everyone in the game is at a different gear score level and everything. And I can assure you that it will most likely not affect you at all uh, unless you are up in the 1% of PVPers and everything. But aside from that, like most people are just grinding by themselves anyway. And just work on yourself like that's the biggest tip i can give to anyone playing this game is you know i understand competition i love competition gearing up with my friends and everything but for the most part like just work on yourself work on self gains don't compare yourself to others and um yeah i think you'll just have a good time just work on gear pieces one at a time for yourself and just progress and you'll enjoy it so yeah, that's my stance on it. If you're buying cosmetics and pearl outfits because you think they look cool, more power to you. 
if you're gonna swipe for all of that cool i also don't care thanks for funding the servers but i can assure you if you're coming into the game thinking like oh can i catch up yeah you'll be able to catch up i can i can promise you that if i were to start a new account today just with the knowledge i know i can probably catch up to endgame people in a couple of months and so yeah with that said just uh watch watch more guides read or watch some streamers watch some youtube videos ask questions you'll get caught up and so yeah those are about all the things i wanted to talk about if you have any more specific questions on various things feel free to let me know and before i head out i wanted to show you guys all something while we we're on the topic of pearl outfits um so all the bdo partners recently got the new outfit to showcase and i wanted to show all of you guys it too it's more for like a cosmetic thing as well and yeah i just want to show you what the new outfit looked like and how it dies well you guys know i'm very critical on the outfits because if something looks dumb i'm gonna i'm gonna say it so with that said let me show you what the new outfit for the week is that got released with the current patch so i think it was yesterday and yeah i will show you how it dies and all that stuff how well it runs you guys know how i feel about capes in this game and how they kind of look stiff and weird but we're, we're gonna show you all of you together what it looks like all right so the new outfit that was released this week was the crimson flame one i kind of previewed it a little bit um you guys can get all of this as well and so basically this is the new one that came out this week and so yeah i'm gonna open the box together that way it's not died this is literally what you guys get by default and i'll show you how it changes as well so the new crimson outfit box we're doing it on our megu and so yeah this is what it looks like by default i think this is a it's actually a really nice outfit i think the cape is like you know a little bit extra large but it's, it's whatever you can always hide that if you don't like like it as well as the hat and um yeah this is what it looks like by default if you don't like the cape you can hide the cape but the important thing people always want to know is how well does it die and what does it look like so first of all let's run around you know how like big outfits usually with cape style things it kind of looks goofy when you run around and especially you've seen in the past when i reviewed some other outfits how it's like ooh, that looks stiff the outfit looks nice but the cape part it ain't it all right so anyway with that said let's go diet and see what all the pieces look like so this is what it looks like by default and yeah so let's see okay so let's see the main body part my favorite kind of dyes and the styles uh, i use mostly depends on um like what kind of outfit it's for this one looks like an elegant kind of thing so you'd probably look at like silky or you know silk leather glossy kind of thing and usually the colors that i think go really well are probably the yellows and the oranges to be honest i think honestly red looks really nice um as always with like blacks and you know blues so anyway these are the colors i kind of choose the most because I, I think the one thing i look at when dying an outfit is especially like the weather system and does it look stupid if it's like raining and or super dark because the weather in the system really does make the game kind of dark at night so yeah that's one thing i do actually keep in mind when i look at all of this so yeah the main outfit i do think white looks nice as well just by default gold if we look at you know if i were to think about this kind of outfit where would i see it in public or i guess it's obviously not even american but um the colors they would use is probably like red gold as an asian myself i've i've never seen this but i've seen something close to it in like real life as well so I think like golds, reds, blacks are always nice. White. Um, ooh, you can actually dye the dragon. That's a nice attention to detail. Obviously, dragons 
most likely gold or red in like real life and so you can mess with that one as well if, i think when it comes to like the like overlay textures on it let's see what would this one look like black is nice as well you don't want to like overlap it you want to have a different color for the most part but the shiny metal feeling i think that one looks cool actually so have a black dragon, the individual part over here. What color is that? Is that like dark red? Let's see. Oh, that's metal feeling. Let's go back to, I think this is probably silky and or fabric will probably look the best. Yeah, let's see, silky. Yeah, I think silk looks a lot better. And the best weather I would choose is probably this one, number six. Or, like, this one, because this represents daytime, evening, and, like, more evening. And then this one is kind of, like, night-ish. So this is the one I go to. My go-to, like, weather. This is important to actually look at, because some outfits look better during the day than it does at night. I'm just saying it is what it is. And then what else gets changed? The inner sleeve. Cool. I think, honestly, like, a lot of these... What is that? Oh, like the dragon on the shoulder piece. Cool. One looks... During the silky, if you choose like a light color, it looks a little bit transparent. So I think that's cool as well. And then you could dye the... What is this? The little gem thingy in the middle. Usually that by default, like the green represents like jade and wealth. In Asian culture. I know no one cares. But yeah, and a little rainbow jawbreaker marble. Let's see, I would probably choose like a metal feeling, authentic metal or shiny metal. Let's see. Uh, let's let's choose a green. Choose a light green. Well, that looks pretty nice actually. Or a shiny one. I actually think the um, authentic one would be a lot nicer. That's very cool. And then the middle outfit part. Is it by default? Hold on. So by default, it's black. I think, honestly, I like black and gold. It looks really nice. Oh boy, the cape part. Let's see it. The cape definitely has to be silky or leather. Red. I, I think red is nice, actually. But let's see. What would it look like in... Something about that just looks goofy. Yeah, so one authentic is a little darker shade and silky is a little bit lighter shade. Um, ooh, see how like what I'm talking about during the day, it looks actually different. So that's actually white, whiter ish. Honestly, I think red just looks nice. Like, red and gold. Red, gold, black. You know, you can't really go wrong with those colors straight up. This one over here. And you could change the whole crest color. What would that look like, black? Yeah, it doesn't look that great. <laughs> Yeah, never mind. I think uh, gold looks nice. <laughs> and then... Is that... Hold on. Okay, so that one is red outer, black inner by default. So let's see. Why does that look like... You know how when there's water and oil look, has the rainbow color? Yeah, that kind of looks like that. Honestly, default color just looks nice. Um, I 
but it does like the whole red with the colors I chose kind of looks different. So let's actually play around with that one a little bit. That's a little too shiny. That's you know when you see people wearing like outfits that are like very bright. Let's see how this looks in. It looked good in the preview. The cape itself, the color, kind of goofy looking. I'm not gonna lie. So, like, what other pieces? This is the. Hold up, let me see. These are the gloves. I'm gonna be honest. You have to zoom in. This is the little like thing over here. You most likely won't even be able to see it. The shoes. Shoes are important. People do look at that, actually, especially in real life. The first thing you notice about someone is probably their shoes. All right, so... Black, gold, red already kind of fits the theme. And the helmet... Do I have the helmet hidden? Uh... Oh, it's just like the ornaments on the top. I was like, wait, what am I looking at? I thought this is one of the things you could dye as well. Let me just pick a color. I'm going to be honest. But hold on. Where was it? This thing, Crimson Flame Helmet. Is this supposed is this supposed to look like that? I honestly barely even noticed because like for Megu, it looks kinda the same, actually. But I guess if you like the different front of the hairstyle, then it probably looks nice. But I guess. What I've noticed is you're basically only changing like the top part of it. So, with that said, overall, I think this is a nice outfit. You're gonna have to mess with the colors based on how you like it. But overall, I think it's actually a nice one. It probably goes well with all the classes. This is an all class outfit. And when you walk around and move and everything, like this is unironically what it looks like. Oh, oh there it is. Wondering why it didn't show for a second. Okay, well. <laughs> it's kind of goofy, actually. I, I understand the theme. This is a traditional. But I think realistically, I uh, would probably hide that. So, anyway. Overall, looks good. And then when you're actually in combat looking at your character like that, this is what combat would look like for the most part so yeah overall i think it's a good one so with that said once again thanks so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed the pearl shop outfit and all the pearl shop tips i can give to you whether you're a beginner or you know just returning to the game if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comments or you can join the discord down below we have a channel for gear help so no matter where you're at in the game i'll help you point I'll point you into the right direction for every class. I think I have a pretty good knowledge of, for the most part, every class in the game. Obviously, I know Dark Knight better than others, but I can answer general questions for the most part. And so, yeah, with that said, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. And we have some more stuff coming out in the future, updated guides and a lot of other grind spot videos. So if you're interested in that, be sure to drop a quick like on the video, hit that subscribe button. And if you are interested in talking or watching any videos that I talked about previously, I'll leave those in the description as well. So peace.